Oh, Tim, did we just get a delivery? We did, yeah. I opened something to eat. <laughs> did you keep? Okay. It came oh. silver and gold. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is a very, very interesting problem. This guy ordered, um, good, very good customer, 20, um, 20 dollar gold pieces. And so I got those from another dealer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, hey, one of these doesn't pass the, uh, the Sigma? verifier. The Sigma? Yeah. And so I said, that's really crazy. Why don't you send it back? So he sent it back. And I, I, he said, you know, am I doing something wrong? I said, no, absolutely not. Um, so I went back to the guy and I said, uh, one of these is not testing out. He goes, oh, I had one. It's about the same vintage. He said, I had one that didn't test out. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I thought all those were good. And, you know, he's a long-time um, dealer. So I, yeah, I certainly trust. So we're going we're gonna to see. So this was a dealer that, that I go to all the time. Uh oh, here's the guy who just sent the package. <laughs> One thing uh, that I found on my verifier, or uh, what I did, I, I, I waited in the, in the in the package, you know, that little cardboard thing with a plastic window yeah. that, they, that they come in. I, I waited compared to another one, the same batch in 1904, and it was bought almost, almost a gram less in weight. And uh, besides that, the verifier... It, uh, out of all the coins, my buffaloes that I got earlier and everything else, they all check normal on the verifier. Well, so so the message is I shouldn't sell anything to anybody who has a verifier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised how many people actually have verifiers now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, I'll bet. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. yeah, especially with all the stuff you can get off, offline that's junk. But, you know, I'm going to take it out of the holder and test it right now. And um, I've already talked to the source, and he said, oh, no problem with that. We'll just replace it. So. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm curious to uh, make sure you see if your verifier reads like uh, mine. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. get around the back, and then uh, you can see some, you know, a couple issues on it. Oh, and also the color. Look. Compared to the other ones, the color looked a little more yellow. Yeah, I you know I was just gonna say it looked more yellow, which is more like yeah. gold looks. Um, but it's supposed to have what ten percent copper, something like that, nine percent copper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's it's uh, checked. You know, it was non-magnetic. That was good. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, uh, yeah, I can. I tested other coins. Uh, yeah, if you want to see a unusual effect uh, on uh, it's not real. a piece of oh, copper pipe not real. and uh, drop one of them magnets through it, and you'll see how slow it goes down through the pipe. Oh, my word. So it doesn't matter if it's 91.7%, uh, which is a lot of them test, right. um, or 90%. Wow. Nothing. No, not a, Oh, so actually, it, so it did show bad to you. Oh yeah, yeah, not, oh, not yeah. even close. Hi, Richard. This is yeah. uh, this is Yankee. Oh, hey, Yankee. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, hanging in there. <laughs> good. I'm actually recording this because I'm finding it absolutely fascinating. Do you mind? Oh no, 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 that's fine. Wow. So, yeah. how many did you? How many of these did you get? Uh, twenty of them. And this is the only one that. That has failed the test. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, the others were right dead center. I and, must uh, have put at least half of them on the verifier. I usually, just because <clears throat> I pretty much test everything that comes in, but yeah. because of the source, who's a, a good friend and a longtime dealer. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that, you know, if I tested a bunch of them. I just tested another one on mine, and it's showing that... Uh, it's in the brackets. Well, I'll have to get you another one, I guess. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, that funny, work? funny thing, I went down and picked up uh, more gold and silver from the same dealer last night. Uh, that bunch of silver I got from you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, some time back, uh, half uh, Liberties and half uh, uh, Franklin. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have any uh, problem with, with any of it. I'm the verifier. 1904 isn't a key date, is it? No, it's actually very common. All the years were either 1904 or 1907, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, there's uh, three 1907. So somebody's counterfeiting a common date, gold, 1904, Liberty Head. But that was uh, a cottage industry back then. And mostly uh, the 20s are the ones you want to counterfeit because they're worth $20 back then, you see. Whereas the... um, the ones that I think were most counterfeit slipped through were the fives. Because there was just so many of fives in circulation. Yeah. All right, well, I would definitely take care of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, one thing I noticed on, that, uh, on the verifier, uh, when I checked some, especially the Franklins, uh, I got some that... Uh, couple of them wouldn't read, but when I just uh, put the verifier on uh, Sterling or some other uh, silver setting, it, it, it checked up, it checked good. Well, I, no, I don't know why that would be, but... Um, okay, the Franklin I have here tests um, 90% pre-1900 and 90% uh, pre-1945, so and the cursor is in exactly the same place. The ones that we we find that are somewhat erratic are the um, barber coins. Uh-huh. And I don't know if they cheated on the alloy with the barber coins or just um, you know mixed the metals. Well, they'll be outside the bracket. No, they'd be in the brackets, but all over the place. Okay. Coins that the that the U.S. Mint has made in China don't test out right either. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just joking. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm having a, a, some concerns about the U.S. Mint and what they're getting out the door. Where I worked as an electrician, we get little bailing wire that you tie up, yep. uh, wire up, set the hold in place or whatever temporarily. Uh, that bailing wire, even that was made in China. <laughs> was it really? It's, uh, everything's coming from China. Well, you know, you you load up all the old cars on the East Coast, you, you ship them and go through the Panama Canal, they ship them over to China, and they come back as bailing wire. How do you yeah. how do you make a profit doing that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, been a lot of changes, and it's all been going downhill. I agree with you there, Richard. Yeah, we yeah. we're we're on the way of taking uh, <clears throat> all that business and employment away from China, and. Now it's gone back more than ever. Yeah, yeah. So, Richard, do you uh, test all your silver and gold? Yes. Even the stuff you get from Tim? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, especially when he gets... <laughs> no, <over>. don't say <laughs> that, Tim. Tim, what's the lesson here for everyone? <laughs> uh, everyone get a Sigma Metalytics verifier? Or, yeah. or a cheaper pocket pinger if you can't afford one of these things. They're not cheap. Yeah, but they are really good. Yeah, did you uh, test this one as well on that? Well, well, no, because it, it, it was in the package. Oh, I see. Uh, that, okay. that that that's one thing I didn't do, you okay. know, because I I, I don't want to open the packages. Well, Tim, I so. might actually try to try, try this out for you. I want I want to test this on mine as well as the Sigma. I know that that is superior, but I do want to see how this will ping. All right, let's check this out with the pocket pinger. Here's the potential fake one, and I will just, I think the sound might be sufficient on this test here. Listen to the fake one. Okay, I'll flick it like this. Hmm. All right. That's the... Now let's, this is a real one, one of mine. Here we go. Oh my word. Wow. That just keeps, 
going. What a difference. I would recommend that you consider getting one like Tim. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I get this one right. This is the same date. So this is the fake one and this is the real one. But a pocket pinger is definitely an inexpensive way of testing out your gold and silver. I think you should check out the pocket pinger uh, link in the description of this video and uh, get yourself one. They're not expensive. The fact uh, is, when I, before I sent this out to Richard, uh, I lost his order. <laughs> put it in the safe. And, you know, a customer came in, he wanted to look at old coins, so I, I got this old album from upstairs, and um, until I reviewed all the video for two weeks, I couldn't find what, you know, where the heck did that box go? And I saw myself putting it in the safe, okay, and uh, I had to take it out to do my accounting, so I wrote all the dates down and everything, and they put it back in the safe. And the only thing I put in the safe in the same way was this album that I had gotten this customer to look at. So I literally had to use my, my phone. I put the bright light on and I, I'm looking in there and they, there was nothing. And then I took this album out and it had blocked. This this little coin box was about that big. And you, you just couldn't see. It was, it was, you know, behind that coin album. But it sat there for, what, two weeks? <laughs> And that's not the problem. The problem is when you look at the video and you see the guy pulling it in and out and you go, who is that? No, I knew who it was. I, I, I could tell from he's, he has a balding spot in the back, you see, so I knew exactly who that was. All right. Thanks again, Richard. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Good talking to you. Yeah, Richard, I'll get this off in the mail as soon as I get it replaced. Okay. That's fine, Tim. And I'll be calling, calling you later on anyway. Very good. Thank you.